Stay a while and listen. Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start my coverage of AI War 2. It's by Arkin Games and released on October 22nd, 2019. Out of Steam Early Access into all of our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. Um, I was a big fan of the first game, even though I was really, 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 really ridiculously terrible at the game. Um, I had some fun, though. I had a few runs where I did okay. I never did any coverage of it on camera, though. But yeah, big fan of Arkham Games, big fan of uh, the AI War series. We played a little tiny bit of AI War 2, and I just never got around to coming back to it. So, it released at a really bad time for me to be able to cover it. But I said this weekend, no matter what, on my three days off that I have, I am going to hop in. I'm going to cover it. So what we're looking for right now, today, is we're going to go through the tutorial. So you guys can have at least a rough idea of what's going on, how everything works. And then what we're probably going to end up doing is going into Quick Start. And we'll go into the uh, the basic because, again, I'm quite bad at these games. I'm going to hopefully get a little bit better. But what we're going to do to start is we're probably going to go in and we're going to do the helping hands. Essentially, I'm going to have my hand held through the thing by an AI that's going to be helping me. And it's going to be great and hopefully good. And hopefully I crush it. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to do from there. We're going to probably hop into maybe just like double AIs or maybe, maybe we'll just go down the road, you know, and just... Scenario one, two, three, four, and then so on and so forth, and to see if I uh, if I get better or if I continuously stay horrible. Either way, we're going to go through the tutorials, as I said. So let's actually begin this. There is a tremendous amount of information. This game is actually quite complex, and there is a lot to do. Now I've already played through the tutorials on my own a little bit, or uh, once through, just to make sure that I knew what was going on and everything else, and just refamiliarize myself with it. I did that over the. Uh, rendering and editing and stuff that I did last night. So, I have a pretty good idea. Anyway, let's go through this. It might take me longer, might take me shorter than a full episode. Either way, this is only going to be the tutorial episode and then and maybe a day or two we'll release our first official episode where we go through and we start the game in the right stuff. Oh wow, we started at a slower than average speed. That's interesting. All right. Tutorial Step 105, welcome to the first tutorial of AI War 2. This one is about moving the camera plus selecting and ordering units. Currently, we're looking at our starting planet. Let's have a look around. You can use the camera by going to the edge of your screen. However, this I, there might be an option. I haven't looked at it, but it goes off of my screen. So, not really what I would do anyway, but it doesn't seem to lock the mouse to the screen. Again, might be a setting. I'll check that at some point. Okay, so panning will allow you to do it. Or a W, A, S, and D, the, the more conventional way. So when you're done, you can um, also click here to go. You can also grab pan if you hold down the middle mouse button. So there you go. All right, now try zooming in and out. Of course, it's going to be a mouse wheel. I'm going to probably paraphrase some of this stuff. You can get pretty close to the action if you want to, or you don't have to. It's, it's all good. All right, so click there. And lastly, Q, or your fourth mouse button, which I think is this yeah if you have a fourth mouse button you can change the the angle essentially or you hold Q and you can rotate it up and down left and right so it's good stuff this isn't exactly useful gameplay but it does give a fun cinematic view well there you go not really yeah not really all that useful but it is simply what it is and you can go pretty far either way I like it I like that actually we have those options even if like it says it's not necessarily useful but it's there you may have noticed that what appears to be some form of ship, this is the Assault Frigate. I believe it's this thing, yep. Uh-huh. And uh, to select it, either left-click on it directly or hold left-click nearby and drag to create a selection box. Do that or just left-click directly on it. When you have selected the frigate, it's time to make it move. Move the mouse anywhere on the planet that you like. Do a right-click and it will go there. The playable area of a planet is called the Gravity Well, and it is marked by the floating asteroid belt. Units can never move beyond that. So, asteroid belt is way out here, which means that the playable area is within the asteroid belt. All makes sense. It's all good stuff. Uh, to pause the game, you can press the space bar to pause it. Open the escape menu. Pause as much or as little as you like. Now we'll want some targets for your R frigate. There's a few target drones that are set up up here that we can utilize. Um, yes, hmm. of course. We're going to get a little bit closer, but not necessarily super close. There we go. So basically, you can right click on it and it will destroy all the drones. I'm going to do that once, but then I'm going to use the attack move because it looks cool. 
So you can do that. You can click down here or hit X, and then you'll have the attack move. Thank you. I'm just gonna just gonna attack move over this way right now. So cool thing about the frigate is it has multiple different weapons, so it can attack multiple things depending on range and everything else, which is kind of a big deal. It's pretty cool. Alright, and we're leaving. And we're leaving. And we're leaving. We're not leaving. Now we're leaving. You'll learn more about the modes in the future, but you can put this ship into pursuit mode by hitting V. Oh, it'll automatically change. Chase, I didn't know about pursuit mode. I missed that my first way through. You can easily change the speed of time by pressing the plus or the minus key buttons at the bottom of the screen. These two things as well. The cheetah or what have you. Helmsman. Alright, so there we go, and we're done with the first tutorial. We got through that pretty quickly, we're going to hop in and go with basic galactic controls now. Welcome to the second tutorial of AI War 2. This one is about using the galaxy map, sending our view to different planets and moving our units between them. Currently we're looking at our starting planet. We want to look at the galaxy map, which we can do, get to through two different ways. We can either press the tab button on the keyboard, or click the planet name in the top left corner. So Murdoch, or hit tab. I'm going to hit tab. Okay, and then we go to the next part. This is the galaxy. There's not much to see right now. You can move around in the screen just like in the planet view. The currently selected planet is highlighted in a white circle, which is Murdoch. See the names of the planets? Hold control key. If you wish to have this permanently on, there's an options within the settings. Okay. Uh, we want to take our view to Midlander. Okay. Select it to do so. And then you can either hit tab or click the left corner. You can also double click. You can also take your view to planet by double clicking on it. There's also a third way. Hold down control and left click on the planet. Combined with the fact that control shows you the planet names, this can be a quick way to go to specific planets. Oh, that's cool. Didn't know that. Again, I didn't actually look at a lot of the extra tips, which I'm looking at now, which is really cool. I like that. I like that I missed something my first time playing through this. I was trying to get through it a little bit quicker just to get familiar with the game as opposed to really learning every single detail. So it's nice to come back to this. Uh, now we're looking at the AI control planet, and we're going to try attacking this. But first, we need to go back to Murdoch and select our frigates. You might have noticed some things to the side when looking around the planet. These are wormholes. So Murdoch there and Farland over here. Uh, every planet is connected via a chain of these, and units use them to get around the galaxy. They also, or they are also another way of changing what planet we view. To use this to go back, Control and left click. Cool. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Alright, next up. Now, select one of the frigates. We're going to send it through a wormhole. There are two methods. One we can do from this view, and one from the galaxy map. So there's a frigate right there. Uh, with the, this frigate, we'll do the first. Just like how we set our views to go through, we control right-click as opposed to control left-clicking. To Midlander. Use this to send it through and then send our view through. So I'm also going to control left click. And now basically we're going to be waiting for the frigate to show up over here. And once it does, our uh, tutorial will get updated. And in three, two, well, I'm guessing. I have no idea how long it's going to take. There you go. There are some enemies here, so we'll probably want our other frigates to come as well. Now we'll try the other method using the frigates we left behind. First, send your view back to the planet we came from. Select all three of the, the fry gates. Okay, and then go back to the galaxy map. We're going to hit tab to go back there. Under attack and then the click territory. on the current planet name in the top left is the other way. Uh, you can press the M. We'll select all military ships on the current planet. Alright, you might have noticed in the bottom right corner that we still have our frigates selected. Yep, assault frigates times three. They're at 100%. We want to send them to Midlander, the AI-controlled planet we sent the first frigate to. All we have to do here is simply right-click on Midlander. Our frigates will head there. Okay, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and control left click it. Just to go and see what's going on. So over here, our poor little frigate's getting shot at. He is having a bad time. But he's going to have friends soon, and it's going to make it all better. They're sending over a little shieldy guy. And I'm assuming in a couple seconds, there we go. They're all here now. And we're just going to have them go and murder stuff. Alright. The tutorial has been completed. We're going to watch them kill some stuff here just because it's cool. I like it. I 
looks like. The shields are still holding to this. And they're just wrecking pools. Alright, well there you go, guys and girls. Alright, next up. The basics of fleets and building. Welcome to the third tutorial of AI War 2. This one is about the basics of fleet system, which uh, every unit of ours is in, as well as building those units, both ships and structures. Sorry guys and gals, I had to fight with my tongue to say the word gravitic. That's what we're just going to call it. It could be totally wrong, we're going to say it. It's fine. You'll see two new ships on this planet, a transport flagship and a gravitic battle station. Select the transport flagship. That would be this guy, right here. Sup? Alright, the transport flagship is the leader of the mobile combat fleet, which is made up of units such as frigates that we've seen before. For simplicity, those specific frigates were kept outside of this system. By hovering your mouse over it, you will see in the description mention of things such as V-Wings, Fusion Bombers, and Concussion Corvettes. These are the unit types, current and maximum amounts that are in the fleet. Currently, we don't have any built. Alright, so yeah, if we take a look at the bottom... We can see all the various different things that we can have. The V-Wings, we have 0 out of 40. The Fusion Bomber, 0 out of 40. Concussion Corvettes, 0 out of 40. And the Force Field Frigate, 0 out of 1. Alright, now the Gravitic Dealy Battle Station here. Okay, what's this thing all about? Sorry about that, folks. You gotta love interruptions. Alright, the Gravitic Battle Station is the leader of the defensive fleet, which is made up of things like turrets and minefields and mobile structures that we can use to defend our territory. By hovering your mouse over this, you will see mention instead of several turret types and their current and maximum amounts. We also don't have any of these built. The last thing has been there in previous tutorials, but it hasn't been relevant up to now. And that is the Home Command Station. Select it now. Alright, so you can see we have up to six ambush turrets, apparently six grenade launcher turrets, and six concussion turrets, and... Seven tractor arrays. I don't know what the tractor array is all about, but that's okay. All right, the command station we have selected. What's next? Command stations are how we control a planet and make use of resources there. They are essentially the fleet leader of the planet in a way. This particular station is our home, which, if it is destroyed, means we lose. It's very much like a king in chess. By hovering your mouse over this, you'll see a bunch of other stuff like engineers, factories, and some turrets of its own. How about we get building some of the units that these fleets contain? Take a look at the left side of the screen at the sidebar. There's a number of tabs here. Feel free to take a look through them, but when you're ready, go to the build tab, and then we'll be able to click on whatever we got to do. Each sidebar has a tab. B for build, for instance, probably F for fleet, P for planet, so on and so forth. All right. So fleets, it shows you the various different fleets. The Hil Hildut Guard the Murdoch Command, and the Strike Holsis. These are, I guess, the current fleets that we have right now. Um, but then you also see, like, Mobile Strike. And if we get multiple Mobile Strike fleets, they'll all appear here. And they'll also appear in the Planet one, of course. And then, of course, you have the Battle Stations and the Command Stations. So, all the other stuff we'll get to eventually, but for right now, I don't know what Outguard is. Call Outguard groups for help? I don't know what that means. Um... We're going to go to build. That's what they want us to do. All right. You will see a list of possible options here grouped under things such as infrastructure, turrets, other defenses, and station keepers. Every item here tells you the name of it, what fleet it belongs to under that, and shows the icon to the left. We want to build a factory, which is very near the top under infrastructure. Click it and then click it. All right, that's fine. So we're going to go to a factory. I'm just going to plop it down right over here. Won't take long to finish. You should now see units coming out of the transport flagship when the factory is completed. Factories are how we reinforce mobile combat fleets, currently not at maximum capacity. This is completely automatic and occurs whenever such a fleet is on the same planet or one adjacent to where the factory is. Units built by factory or the factory simply appear at the flagships. That factory was part of the command station fleet. If you hover the mouse over the one we just built, it will tell you what fleet it is part of at the top of the tooltip, i.e. For, for Planet Murdoch. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. If you hover over the units that came out, it'll show you a similar thing. Fleet Strike Hulsis. Yep, that's the fleet it's part of. Okay, cool. Let's try building turrets from our battle station, which is a different fleet. Look under the turrets part of the build tab. 
and look for ambush turret. Okay, ambush turret right there. Okay, note under the name that it says what fleet it is part of. Hildut Guard hovering over the battle station tells us it's the leader of the Hildut Guard. Again, at the top of the tooltip. All right, build some ambush turrets. We go with one and two and three, and that's going to be it. All right, extra tip: you can hold Control while building stuff to place five at once instead of one. Hold Alt will place ten, and if you hold both Alt and Control, you'll place fifty. Do you want to leave a building mode or building mode in general? Just right click on empty space. Yep. And the big circle around your mouse when placing turrets is essentially the range of the turret. So you see there, it covers this much area. It'll start firing when things get within that range. All good information to have. It's taking quite a bit of time. We're going to speed things up here a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean ex exceptionally large amount. Okay. We can slow it down again. Because as soon as one gets built, I believe we are good to go. Alright, we can go to the next step. While structures such as the factory and turrets cannot move, battle stations and later citadels, a very similar thing to battle stations, can. Okay, this is important because we can only build structures from a fleet if the leader is present. After the leader, after the leader can leave and go anywhere. Naturally, command stations cannot move and thus only ever have structures on its own planet. Makes sense? Let's try building some turrets on a different planet. Send the battle station to Sidelander at the top left corner and build some concussion turrets. Alright, we can do that. I'll take care of it. Go, go, go through Sidelander. If you, say so. you can select fleet leaders on the galaxy map. Oh yeah, we can do that too. So you see here, fleet leader, and we can just send him to Sidelander. And he's already there. So that's kind of neat. Alright, so we're going to build some concussion dealies. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. So we're down here. We're going to make sure we have our boy selected. We're going to hop over here. We're going to go with concussion turrets. And we're going to plop down. One, two, three. Ah, three's fine. Okay. Huh, now that we're looking here, we can see another transport flagship. But it's currently neutral. Uh, how about we capture this so we can strengthen our mobile forces? We can only capture things like this if we actually control the planet. Luckily, this planet is neutral already, and we can build our station without a fight. If the AI owns the planet, we will have to destroy their station first. However, only the flagship of a mobile combat fleet can build a command station. So, essentially, we need to bring our transport fleet back here. Um, when you're done with that, build tab, logistical command build it and then it will automatically claim everything in the system okay sounds like a plan we're gonna go back through to murdoch and our ship is there in fact you know what we're not gonna do we're not gonna do that we're gonna go here we're gonna do it the right way so we're gonna click on the galaxy tab we're gonna click on our transport flagship and we're gonna right click over here and then i'm gonna send myself over here as well and just basically chill and wait for it to show up which it didn't take very long all right so it's there. We have our, our ship. It's doing what it do. And what we're going to essentially do is we're going to come over here and we're going to build ourselves the logistical command. If this is destroyed, you lose control of the plane. I don't know what the difference between the logistical, the economic, and the military command is, to be honest. I haven't quite gotten to that level of detail just yet, but that's okay. It wants us to do the logistics. We'll do the logistics. Alright, and again, we're going to speed things up a little bit. This might take a while since we have no engineers. Plus minus keys on the keyboard or the stuff down in the bottom left. So if we take a look. I, it actually did everything. Oh, I don't remember hearing that before. Um, just so you guys know too, I, I've seen some stuff on uh, the Steam page. And in the Steam community, the this this particular mission in the tutorial was bugged for a few days, and it looks like it has been fixed because I did find the workaround, and it's been patched out and fixed. So there's no reason to uh, have to worry about it anymore. But if you guys had tried doing this and you got stuck and you're like, wait, it just worked for you, that's why there was a problem. So now it's all fixed, everything is good to go, and here we are, and we're ready to go on to the next step. Now that we have a second fleet, this is a notable, noticeable or a notable jump in our mobile force strength. There are other types of capturable goodies in the galaxy. 
and they are taken the exact same way. Things such as Metal Harvesters, of which there are a few here, and give us a majority of one of our resources, our metal. When the flagship is repaired, the units in the fleet should start appearing, as the factory we built earlier is working away. There, or We have no need for our fleets to be here, however, so it's a good time to look at the Fleets tab. So we're going to hit F, and there we are. I'm going to go ahead and click to go to the next one. This tab shows all the fleets you currently have grouped under things such as Current Planet, Mobile Strike, Battle Stations, and Command Stations. Both of our transport flagships show up under Mobile Strike. The first one is called Strike Holsis, while the new one is Holland. Sorry again, folks. Hovering over them will give you some details, such as current and maximum unit count, if a factory is in range, and some other little bits. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, to say well, There is one factory in range. Oh, that's neat. I like that. If you right-click on one of these, it will select the entire fleet for us. Let us order it around together. Left-click will open up the management screen for that particular fleet. If you left-click on one of the Mobile Strike Fleet's options such as stop factories from producing units for this fleet, or scrap or delete units currently on different planets to the flagship, or toggle transport mode will be available. We're interested in the transport mode. Select the new fleet, Strike, Holland, in this menu by right-clicking it. All right, Holent. I right-clicked. Uh, you can select fleets with hotkeys as well. Each mobile fleet leader displayed its current hotkey on its icon. So two, this is probably one, so one, two. Okay, cool. Uh, you can change this in the management screen. Sure. Uh, you can very quickly get to the management screen for a specific fleet by holding C when clicking on the leader. Oh, well, that's neat. Okay, or you there could just... nothing more for the science teams to analyze in this system. Oh, okay. Calm down. Calm down. So, we could either do that or we could just... Was it left-click? We could left-click there or we could just... Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so we did that. And finally, now enable transport mode. All of the current units or built units will enter the flagship and any more that are built while this is enabled will be stored inside automatically. Bring the fleet back to Murdoch. You can try disabling transport mode to see the units come out. If you have the fleet or the flagship selected, you can hit the L button to load. Okay, I'll do that. Similarly, you can hit the U button to unload, all without needing the fleets tab. It can be handy for selecting the fleets, though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what's the benefit of transporting? It means you can move the fleet around faster depending on the flagship. That also protects units from enemy fire, which is handy if you're planning to rush past AI planets or something that you want to attack. Oh, well, that's cool. All right, so we're going to go back here, and we're going to go and send our crew back to Murdoch. And we're going to wait here for it to come through Sidelander, and then we're going to unload, and we're done with this one. Then all of the ships come out. They've done a lot of automated stuff, making things just a lot easier to do, a lot quicker, and like I said, it's somewhat automated at this point. So a lot of cool little upgrades and just, like, quality of life improvements between this and the first game. Alright, tutorial is complete, and I guess we're going to resource technology and hacking next. This one isn't all that long. Alright, it's our fourth tutorial. Okay, let's take another look at the build menu. So we're going to go to build. When you mouse over one of the options in the build tab, there are some numbers related to our economy. The first is metal cost, represented by the anvil. I actually skipped this one altogether. Um, the second is energy usage, represented by lightning bolt. Metal is used to construct everything. Cool. It's generated over time by things like metal harvesters, which are these things. Okay. Uh, and command stations. And spent over time when constructing things until they're complete. Metal sources can never run out, so this is a constant. That's good. What's not necessary, well, what is good is you see we have 1.7 million, roughly, but we're using 6.2 thousand a second over what we're actually gaining. Once the fleets are done being built, it's gonna drop, that number's gonna drop because it's not gonna be crafting or creating anymore. And if you hover over this, it shows how much is stored, how much is coming in, and how much is going out. So right there, we now have the 2257 that's going to be going up now that everything has been built. Okay, let's see here. Energy is a resource that is not gathered, stored, and consumed, but rather available and allowed to units. Things like command stations increase it, while most units decrease it. If you don't have enough energy left for something, you can't build it. Both of these resources' current amounts are visible at the very top of the screen with the same icons nearby, anvil and lightning bolts. 
Next, let's open the tech tree. Okay, extra tip. If you ever wonder where your metal is going, you can click on the amount of on the top of the screen to get a list of metal flows. You can click on it, really? Oh, that's neat. Okay, so that just brings the big pop-out versus just the little pop-out. Okay, that's cool. Or the little uh, tool tip, we'll say. Extra tip, the build tab also shows the metal cost to the right of the construction options. Okay, that's good to know. Alright. Almost everything we use is affected by one of the technologies in here. One very important fact is these technologies are not per unit type. Multiple units can benefit from the same technology. And in fact, we have one of those examples. If you hover over each technology, it will tell you what units you currently have that it will affect and what units in the in fleets you could capture that it would also affect. Really? What does that mean? Okay, uh, ambush turrets and vanguard hydras. Okay, ships that we could capture. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I like that. I like that. The resource used for these is science, and it's represented by the flask icon at the top of the screen. But, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can see the current your current amount at the top, just like with metal energy. We have a few ways of gaining science, but the main one is extracting it from planets that we have captured. There is a finite number or amount to collect per planet, however. Let's try upgrading something. Upgrade a generalist fusion and concussion technologies once. Uh, generalist fusion and concussion. Generalist, yes. Fusion, yes. And concussion, is it alphabetical? It is. Yeah. Sweet. And we've unlocked these various different things. Cool. Next. What upgrading those has just done is upgraded the mark of the relevant units. There is a range starting from, oh, okay, 1 at the lowest to 7 at the highest. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, like a lot of your ships, like right now we just got the Fusion Bomber. It's now a Mark II. So, I guess it'll explain more of this here in a second. Each Mark a unit has increased things like health damage and sometimes special effects such as tractor beams or resource production. Most things will also increase their maximum amount, like our V-Wings, but such things but things such as metal harvesters will not. Each unit that has marks has a numeral next to it, which has a different color depending on the mark. Starting from the lowest to the highest, they are white, I guess like an orange school bus yellow type thing, uh, blue, a green, an orange, a red... Those look very similar to me. I can barely tell the difference, but I can tell it. And, of course, 7 is the like pinkish purple. Or a hot pink, maybe? Part of the strategy of the game is to upgrade the, th the right things. For example, upgrading the technology which benefits a lot of your units is probably better than the technology that only benefits a few. But it's entirely possible for the second one to be more useful in the long run. Makes sense. Now we'll need to go on to the last resource. First, we need to move our fleet to Midlander. Once it's there, send your, send your view there and open the Hacks tab. Make sure to bring all of it. Okay, all of our fleets, huh? Hooah! And we're going to Sidelander? Midlander, sorry. We're on it. All right, we're heading. All right, the hacks tab. They're, they're, they're starting to come in. They're taking a sweet time though. And it looks like we are gonna be under attack in enemy territory. Hurry up guys. Okay, I'm, I'm here in Midlander. There we go. A few options here. Each shows the cost in... We'll, we'll pause. A few options here. Each shows the cost and hacking points and the duration. Hovering over them tells us what they do. Some target a specific unit on the planet and say what it is. Otherwise, it's something done to the planet. Hacking points are the resource used to perform hacks. Represented by the hat and eye mask icon. Okay, makes sense. Uh, visible at the top, like science, there are two ways of getting this, but the main one is also extracting it from captured planets with a finite amount from each. Okay, good to know. We want to do the giant ship line hack. There is an advanced research station here, which can grant the hacking fleet a new unit type. 
We brought the entire fleet here because most hacks have a response to them. The AI isn't happy. Yeah, makes sense. Until completed, enemies will periodically swar or spawn and try to stop you. This hack is currently very easy, and a rare few have no response. All right, that makes sense. You can hover over the resource amount at the top of the screen to see how strong the AI response is. Is it this? The AI is distracted by other threats outside the galaxy. Your only hope is not to raise the AIP so high that it would view you as a threat. Okay, you can hover over the resource amount at the top of the screen. AI response is 0.5, very easy. Hacking points spent. Spending 80 will increase the response level. Okay, that's cool too. Uh, the, this increases the more you hack that same AI. Factions like the nano cost respond a bit differently. Begin the hack and will continue when you have the new units built. Extra tip 1, hacking is done by the closest flagship to the target. While the hack is in progress, it cannot leave the planet. Left click on the hacking notification at the top of the screen will allow you to cancel it. This can be useful when the response is overwhelming. Alright, we want giant ship line. And we're going to unpause. It's 30 seconds to do it. I would very much like to control my units, but I can't seem to do this. I, I gotta say, I'm not entirely certain as to why I can't select my ships. Oh, they're drone fusions. I don't have a control over them at all. Okay, that makes sense. Alright, and then three, two, one. We've done it. Now you have an extra unit type for this fleet. Now we'll move on to the very last thing, which isn't exactly a resource. AI progress or AIP. It is the main indicator of how aware the AI is. The higher it is, the more forces it will devote to your presence, and eventually it'll have new behaviors such as opening up wormholes to your back line. Oh, that sounds awful. The current AIP value is shown at the top bar. Yep, the 10, we looked at that earlier. With the red menacing face icon. Yeah. Alright, doing things such as destroying an AI command station will increase this. There are ways to decrease it, such as destroying structures like data centers. Managing this is critical to surviving and eventually winning. You must make sure whatever you pay the price an AIP for is worth it. Else, eventually you will be overwhelmed. Units that increase AIP will state so in their tooltip. In general, though, your units will never automatically attack something that would increase it. Try destroying the AI command station to see the change. Hovering the mouse over the AIP amount will give you more information, and clicking it will give you um, a log of every single change in the entire game. Oh, that's neat. All right, boyos, let's uh, set you guys to super aggressive murder, and you guys do that. I'm also probably going to send you over here to handle this specifically. What are you? You're a combat sentry friggin', are you? Doesn't look like I can do anything with you. What, 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 what purpose do you serve, friend? I guess maybe it's these cloaked units? Okay, well we're trying to destroy the Praetorian Guard here. I definitely think we're going to be able to do that. Alright, so the only things that we haven't destroyed yet are Team over four. here. And it's not wanting us to destroy it, but we're going to, because this oh, is something that's blow that up, sir. This is gonna be something that that's going to actually cause us some issues. So, so it's coming. The pain is getting flung at it, and boom, it jumped up to 30 AIP. Counter counterattacks unlock at 50. Hunter waves at 200. A reconquest at unlock at 70. AIP? What is a reconquest? Alright, well that's cool. Okay, so we've done that one. Very nice. And finally, guys and gals, the basics of scouting and vision, and then we'll end up our episode. So this is the fifth and final uh, thing, so let's go to the galaxy map as it requests. Something that hasn't been relevant at all is the concept of explored, watched, and permanently watched planets. 
let's take a look at all the planets adjacent to our home world. If you hover the mouse over them, a tooltip will stay permanently watched. And if we look at the planet view, we can see everything here in real time. So any of these three will all say, if you look at the bottom of the screen, permanently watched. It says it as the first thing under the planet name. And then if we left click on it, sorry, control left click on it, we'll go to the planet view. We can see everything in real time as it's stated. Okay, so permanently watched means that we will always have up-to-date information as to what is going on here forever. If there's a battle, a scary threat that we need to deal with, whatever. The planets next to our home world are always permanently watched in any game. If you aren't on it, go to the galaxy map. Also, the numbers beside the planets, three, six, three, four question mark, four question mark, four question mark. These are all the different strengths of the forces there. Like our strength is eight right now, for at least one of our fleets. Okay, now let's look at the planets a bit further out. Hovering over the tooltip for these, they are explored. It says again at the bottom, just under the planet name. Looking at the planet view will give us what seems to be real time, but it's grainy. The difference here is we can only see things that we've spotted here in the past. We know that they're still here and can thus track them, but as soon as they leave the planet, we have no idea where they are. Similarly, we don't know about any new arrivals, if there are any. Similar to the permanently watched planets near our homeworld, any planets that are two connections or hops or planets away, um, well, they will be shown as explored. Now is a good time to mention watched. If we have a unit on a planet that is normally explored it becomes watched while our unit is our unit or units are there we can see everything up to date just like a permanently watched planet at least until the unit dies or leaves next to source of this is logistics stations which watch any adjacent planets yet again if you aren't on it head to the galaxy map so we're gonna go take a look at the grainy thing so you see how it's all grainy here this means that this is not sorry this is not a permanently watched one. These are just explored. Okay, so we're gonna head back. So basically we're running off of previously acquired data. The planets further out than the explored ones are unexplored. We have absolutely no idea what's there, if anything. Looking at the planet view gives us a very distorted image, which we're gonna go take a look at. It's just all like, hey, maybe there's a planet there. We don't know. I like that. I like that level of detail. I think that's actually quite cool. A critical part of this status is that our units can't even go to these planets. We're essentially locked out. Let's do something about that. Our fleet, our starting fleet should have been constructing during this time. Head to the planet of Alast, or Alast, and destroy the command station there. Some information will appear at the bottom of this window once you do. All right, we're going to bring our f combat factory, what? Sure. Uh, our strike fleet, which doesn't seem to have any units for some reason. Why, why don't you? Hold on, let's, let's go back here. Well, I mean, it, whatever. So we're going to go to this place. So I'm just going to right click and then control left click. And our peeps are going to come in and start blowing stuff up, destroying things, making things look bad. Come on, boys. Do things. Alright, we're gonna get some ambush turrets, some grenade launcher turrets. This is going to be fly. There we go. So it looks like the ambush turrets are kind of shooting. Actually, not sure they are. It's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot going on. But yeah, we're taking shots at all sorts of things. So our detector here is making sure that we can see everything. I'm gonna move you up to make sure you're at least sort of defending our uh, our boys. I love the shield, guys. I, I love the effect too. I think it looks really cool. I need to not have him inside my bubble though. Okay. So we got all of that and now we just have to basically go over here and get the pike guard post and a few other things and then we're going to be set. Global command auger. Auger? Augmenter. Augmenter. 
Alright, we're gonna speed things up. Take everything out. Okay, I think do we we must have taken down the control point. So some information will appear and destroy the command station. Oh, we did not. We did not destroy the command station. Where is it? Oh, it's over here. Sorry. My bad. That'll be the end of them, as they say. It will be a pleasure. Will be. All right. Come on. Let's get hustling, boys. Very nice. Good job, guys. All right. Cool. All right. We explored the three adjacent planets existing. Very nice. And there we go. You may have seen the mention of planets being explored. This is because the AI command station being destroyed, and and. Is how we usually reveal the galaxy. Doing that causes a number of unexplored planets directly adjacent to already explored planets to become explored. Thus, by taking territory and capturing things, our information gradually expands over time. Now, a few of the unexplored planets we could see nothing on are revealed to us. Hmm, how do we make a planet permanently watched? For this, we head to Bacchus and open the Hacks tab. Well, I guess we're going to Bacchus, guys and gals. Let's go. I have my orders. We're going to open the hacks tab. Taking fire in enemy territories. All right. And we're just going to pause real quick for a second. Here we have the option of doing a watch planet hack on this planet. Unlike most hacks, this can be done without having a flagship present. Or indeed any of our units. This can only... Wait. Do we not need to take our... Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, sir. We just need to change our view and open the hacks tab. Whoopsie! Everybody go back. I have my orders. Okay, so we need to do watch planet. Hacking underway. Hacking is finished. No, go back through. No settings updated. Go back through. In route. Go back through, you can do it, I believe. They keep coming through, we're losing so many units, fine. I kind of read what was going on, but I didn't fully read it. My own fault. I wonder if they're going to keep coming through, or if these are just like, each of them are already like in transit. It's very possible it's that. Anyway, so, we got everybody back, I guess. Okay. So, we have the option of doing a watch, it can be done without having a flagship present or indeed any of the units. This can be done to an explorer planet. And we'll make it permanently watched. Do so now. We've clicked there. Now we will always have up to date information here. And both the question mark numbers and the dash in the icon are gone. Now let's try another similar hack used to explore planets. This is an alternative to destroying AI command stations. And it can only be done on unexplored planets adjacent to explored ones in a similar manner to destroying stations. Try it on Planet Doll. Alright, let's go back to our overview here. And Doll is right there. So. We're here, we've hacked this to watch the planet, which now makes it permanently watched, and then that makes this explored, and this is unexplored. So now if we go to Dull, uh, I think we go to Hack, and we go to Explore the Planet, and it's a real quick one, and there it is. Okay, cool. And step eight, now we have a look at a useful tab for when on the galaxy map. Open the Intel tab. Okay. Here we have a list of things we know about grouped into, things we know about grouped into categories such as prime objectives, turrets, new fleets, resource gathering, and beginner tips. Such things include important capturables for us like new, like a new fleet or things like alien technology. Also included are important AI targets such as the Overlord their version of the king. Lastly, this notes any bits of science or hacking points that you still have left to collect, as well as some tips on things to do. Okay, prime objectives, it's got more planets, more turrets, new fleets, okay. Beginner tips, uh, build engineers for ship production and repair, capture a few planets, defend Murdoch from waves, okay, nice. Okay, strike cla uh, craft, okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, in general, this is a fairly good tab to look at if you need a plan or uh, if you're a little bit lost as to what to do. Like many other tabs, hovering over things here will give you more information and, if applicable, highlight the thing being referred to on the galaxy map. Currently, this concludes the basic tutorials. You should hopefully know enough by now that you should be able to hop into the first basic quick start and have a decent go. If you want a lot more information, there is a how to play area 
accessible from the escape menu or the main menu. Extra tip for things like capturables or enemy targets, hovering over that entry will give you a rough estimate of how hard or difficult it would be to get there. All right, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have played through the tutorial. I'm sorry if uh, some of the reading got a little bit slurred or schmeshy, but it is what it is. There's a lot to read, and of course, everybody's writing is different slightly. So how I would phrase and pace something might be slightly different. So it, it is what it is. You guys know I don't know how to read, apparently. It's fine. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this game. I have been for a while. I'm really excited to see how much better I hopefully do than I did in the first game. But there you have it. Uh, a couple days out, I'm hoping we should see the first episode of me hopping in and actually playing. Coming on to the channel. And we'll just go from there. We'll continue on until we take down the Overlord. Who knows? Who can say? Anyway, folks, if you want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, or any of that wonderful fun stuff, it'll all be down below in the description of the video and various links and things of that nature like it always is. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for things like this, more things like this, uh, tons of other videos, literally thousands. I'm coming up on my six-year anniversary doing things on YouTube, and I put a lot of work into it, so you should be able to find something that you enjoy. And stick around the channel, guys. There'll be more coming. Anyway. Until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by The Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>